Right now, the Sherpa fire in Santa Barbara County continues to grow, now covering more than 4,000 acres. And this wildfire, it does continue to grow and spread deeper into the Los Padres National Forest as crews fight to put out the blaze. And also, just into our newsroom, we did get a tweet, and that was from the Kern County uh, Fire Department. And it, they are indicating that several Kern County firefighters are actually being sent to the Los Padres National Forest to help fight this blaze. There's a total of 1,200 firefighters on scene right now battling this fire and for a time the 101 was shut down. I do want to show you a map of where exactly this was located and this fire it is north of Capitan south of Santa Inez and again the 101 was shut down but has been reopened as of this morning. So that fire is now 5% contained evacuation orders. They have been issued for areas east of El Capitan Canyon to Farron Road. Now that blaze it did break out around 3:30 Wednesday morning. I want to show you these pictures that came into Twitter and you you can see the magnitude of this fire. This is actually a playground right here with the blaze in the background. So dangerously close, this blaze is getting to that playground. And we will continue to uh, track this fire and bring the very latest as it comes into the newsroom. And meanwhile, because of that fire, oil company Exxon Mobil evacuated workers from its Los Flores processing plant. Now, that fire, it's also threatening dozens of homes in the area. And with this raging fire out of control, this weekend's weather, it won't be helping things out much. For more on what we can expect, let's check in now with meteorologist Mike Boyce. Mike. About eight miles per hour currently in Santa Barbara, and of course we do have dry conditions and uh, relatively warm temperatures. Let's put the future winds here in motion, just to show you. The winds will pick up later on this afternoon, calm down overnight tonight, but then again tomorrow afternoon you will see stronger winds in that area, in excess of 15 or possibly up to 20 miles per hour. So that will not help the firefighting efforts. Hopefully they can get it somewhat contained this afternoon. Let's look at your downtown roof, uh, rooftop cam here in Bakersfield. We're looking at nice calm conditions right now and temperatures across the region warming up really quickly since this morning. We're in the mid 70s right now in Bakersfield, mid 60s out towards Fraser Park and in the low 70s up towards the Hatchby. So let's see where we'll go from here. The next 12 hours look like this warming up quickly to about 90 degrees today. That's about our average this time of year. We'll see sunny conditions and we have even warmer weather to talk about for the weekend and into next week. I'll have more about that in just a bit. Lindsay. Mike, thank you. Right now, investigators are finding more about the shooter in the Orlando nightclub massacre and about his wife as well. This is a grieving community is laying to rest more of the 49 victims in the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Orlando. And many in Orlando's gay community are upset over rules about donating blood. They say many men were turned away at blood donation centers in the hours after the massacre. And according to the FDA, men who have had sex with other men within the past year cannot donate. I know that I have had regular tests and I know I'm a, uh, an HIV negative person that I felt like, why couldn't I give blood and why couldn't they screen it? All blood, regardless of the donor, is screened for a number of things, including hepatitis B and C and HIV. The FDA says it's a matter of risk, but it has become a controversial issue on the floors of the government, White House, and among scientists. This morning, two active duty Marines stationed at Camp Pendleton are being investigated for allegedly threatening to attack gay bars. This picture was posted to a private Facebook group for Marines by a corporal in the Marine Corps who has not been identified. The post, as you can see, shows him with a rifle with the text that reads, coming to a gay bar near you. A following post reads, too soon. Marine Corps officials say they're taking this seriously and are investigating the matter. And the current high school district police chief finds himself on paid administrative leave after less than a month on the job. Chief Joseph Lopetegui was appointed to the role last October and was put on leave for undisclosed reasons back on May 13th. Before that, he worked for the district as a police officer starting in 2008. The district wouldn't comment any further on the Pedagogy's situation, saying it is a personnel matter. In the meantime, Lieutenant Gerald Wyatt is acting as KHSD's police chief. Supervisors are scheduled to review and approve Kern County's budget Tuesday morning, which paints a pretty grim picture for local deputies, firefighters, and services for foster families. The county is reporting a $49 million deficit in its general fund, and a 20 
$21 million hole in its fire fund. According to this initial budget, Kern County officials may be forced to lay off 30 sheriff's deputies and 30 firefighters. The Rosamond substation is also on the chopping block. There might also be a partial shutdown of the downtown jail. Plus, the Department of Human Services will be forced to leave many current employed vacant positions, severely hurting programs for foster families. This morning, the Beardsley School District is facing a lawsuit tied to a case where a teacher had sexual relations with at least three students. Local attorney Daniel Rodriguez represents two of the students who are victims of the former Beardsley Junior High teacher, Vanessa Jean Hooker. She was convicted and sentenced earlier this year for having a sexual relationship with the students. Rodriguez says the district was aware of what happened but did not specifically punish Hooker. Instead, warning all teachers about social media contacts with students. He compared that to the deadly alligator attack at Disney World in Orlando. It kind of reminds me of the Disney uh, World situation where that alligator came out and snatched that little boy. The signs that were up said, uh, don't wade in the water, <laughs> stay out of the water, as opposed to there's alligators in the water, stay away from the water. Very different. That lawsuit has been filed against the Beardsley School District, its superintendent, the junior high's principal, and Hooker. A local deli is now working closely with MNS Security to get video of several burglaries since last week in an attempt to identify the individuals involved. A staff member at Circle Deli on Golden State Avenue said they found someone on a bike prying open the patio gate yesterday morning. Someone also made off with their register and vault in an earlier burglary. And they took the candy machine out. And the candy machine was actually for the Children's Cancer Society. Actually, it was full of money because there was no more candy in it. And that was like another almost $600 to repair. It's unknown if these burglaries are connected. And the assistant manager of the deli says the value of what is stolen keeps on changing. Anything from cigarettes to soda and even their calculator have been taken. Amtrak is expanding their services between the Bay Area and San Joaquin Valley. The official announcement coming earlier this morning. Amtrak staff, along with elected officials and various organizations, held a press conference to inaugurate their new seventh daily round trip service, which means Amtrak will be adding an additional daily round trip train between Bakersfield and Oakland's Jack London Square Station, making it more convenient for passengers traveling between the Bay Area, San Joaquin Valley cities, and other destinations throughout California. Right now, a special graduation ceremony is taking place for teen parents who managed to finish school earning their diplomas and GEDs. The Department of Human Services is hosting the celebration. It's taking place right now at Coconut Joe's Banquet Hall. Now, this is a Live look at that ceremony. The Human Services Department provides case management services to more than 600 parenting or pregnant teens on an annual basis and assisted more than 200 clients this year. Many students completing the program are already involved in continuing education. Still to come on 23 ABC News at 11 a.m., the president is in Yosemite. Why he's celebrating Father's Day weekend there? We'll have more on that coming up on 23 ABC.